here's the video. Here's the question I have most every single day. Okay, so just to prove the point, I have a Battleborn battery that I've charged. It's so fully charged that if I charge it anymore, it's going to trip. All right. And here I have another lithium ion phosphate battery. They're both very similar 100 amp hour batteries. But just to prove a point, they're slightly different manufacturers, so there's going to be slight discrepancies. I have discharged this one, okay? But I get a call many, many times a day saying my inverter won't turn on or it has shut off. But I measure the voltage on my uh, my batteries. Well, let's go right across the second one there. Do you see all 11 volts there? So my battery voltage is 24.55 volts and my inverter won't turn on. What's the problem? Okay, so here's the problem. First of all, you got one inverter, that's one battery that's sitting at 13.54 volts. Maybe some guys have balanced their batteries or never balanced their batteries. So they're only seeing the two batteries in, in, in series and not seeing them individually. So this one's this one I have, like I said, discharged to 11.42. In all fairness, that should be able to turn on a 12 volt inverter, right? That's That's how we think. So what I'm going to do is, this is what I ask people to do. I say, all right, this is the voltage. Take your positive terminal on the battery. Let me just zoom out a bit over here. Just uh, connect that on there, would you? I always tell them to measure in circuit because BMSs and batteries lie to you, okay? If they're doing no work, they're gonna show you full voltage output. So let's measure again on the, on the output okay now all of a sudden it's 4.72 okay so do you see how the, how the lie uh, comes across over here so we've got uh, we had we take them out of circuit oh my goodness take them out of circuit we saw 24 25 volts we put them across the inverter and, the, and that's wired up to the inverter right now and the inverter won't turn on but many people don't measure the voltage when the batteries are connected to the inverter they disconnect the batteries from the inverter and then measure the voltage and get the live voltage okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to charge up this uh, little 12 volt battery just with my trusty power supply here just enough to show you simulate what happens uh right at the end of life just clip that on there please it's negative positive Okay, you can see my power supply is registering 1.6 volts because the BMS is lying to you. Okay, so I'm going to charge it up. Give it just a bit of charge. I'm going to charge it for 5 amps. And you see I've turned the voltage way up. And it's charging at 12.6, 12.7 volts. But in actual fact, the battery is dead. Okay, so these are all the little, little lies that you can read from batteries that confuse people every day so that should be enough now to uh that should be enough now to charge my to start up my inverter you can see it's at 12.1 volts okay so now i'm going to start up the inverter okay and we'll take this power supply off take the power supply off there you'll see the inverter will run for a little while once it starts up you can see 25.5 it looks beautiful right there's no reason to complain about anything it's starting to invert and obviously there's no load on here i've only charged this battery with like five amps for maybe five seconds so and this inverter is only using uh, about 0.6 amps so it's going to take a little bit longer to discharge and uh so notice that voltage 25.3 it looks very healthy. Hopefully it uh, shuts off pretty soon. I'll edit this video just in case. It's taking a bit longer than I'd hoped. But notice how the voltage is starting to drop. It still looks healthy. There we go. Inverter shut off. Okay, and then people come to me, they go, they disconnect their batteries. 
I'm going to do this again because I get asked the same question over and over again. Put that on volts, please. DC volts. And let's measure that 12 volts over there. You see? Looks beautiful. 24 volts. And people wonder why. So the other problem is people don't realize if we have a four cell battery like this uh, Battleborn over here, that's four cell. Four cell in series, and you have got this lithium ion phosphate, also four cell in series, each making 12 volts or 13 volts, etc. This battery, if I've got power coming in here, charging through in series with this one, this battery has no way of, of topping this battery off completely. For example, this one over here, the cells are all full to the brim. This one over here, the cells are all empty. If I put power in this battery right now, if I put power in this battery from my little power supply over here, what's going to happen is it's going to start charging this battery through this one, but this one is fully charged. So this one is going to kick out like in at any moment. So I will never be able to charge both of these batteries fully unless I either take these apart and put them in parallel with each other, positive to positive, negative to negative, and let this one balance into that one. But that's all fine for a short period of time because this one might have a slight difference in capacity to this one. So as time goes on, this one might become fully charged or this one become empty, just like we've seen right now. So I'm going to show you the opposite effect now of your inverter, why it will never charge this situation ever, ever. Because, like I said, this one's fully charged, this one's completely empty. So I'm going to put my power supply over these batteries and watch what happens. Okay, so I got my power supply over those two batteries. Like before, if I moved it here, you'll see my power supply shows 13.3 volts. If I move it here... It shows nothing because the power supply is putting a, a small load onto this battery that the meter was not doing. Okay, that's why. Okay. So let's say now I up the voltage on this power supply to, let's see, I can push it all the way up. This is a 30 volt power supply. And it won't go above uh, 26 volts because the, it's limited to 5 amps. So all it can do is put in 5 amps. I want to just drop it. A little bit more and I'm hopefully this this battery is so fully charged I'm going to show you what happens now hopefully I can catch it on video and that there's uh, what should happen is all of a sudden this battery voltage will spike because this battery now has gone open circuit and this one's still trying to charge okay and what happens is when the inverter like on that previous little video clip, when the inverter detects that the battery voltage goes above, like it just shoots, you know, to 32 volts and then the inverter stops charging the battery because it detects that there's a problem. And then uh, you see the solar panel icon light up, but the dotted line from the solar panel disappears, telling you that there's been a, there's been a fault code. And so, um, so you're stuck in a situation where you call me saying, well, the inverter is faulty because... It won't charge up my batteries. Well, that's, that's what I'm trying to show you. It's not always the case. All right. So now we have a fully charged battery and empty battery. Now we're going to try and charge just like you would in circuit and understanding where these problems are coming from. Okay, so the inverter, you're going to be trying to charge these batteries. This one's empty, this one's full. The inverter is going to charge these two in series. Obviously, it's, it's just electrical. There's nothing fantastic about the inverter. I'm using a straightforward power supply to simulate the charger. Okay, so and I've set this uh, power supply to 30 volts trying to charge a 28 volt battery okay and you're going to see hooked up here is my batteries fully charged fully empty basically just bearing along with me right now 26.5 volts everything looks healthy okay 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip my breaker switch for my solar panels. I've got three solar panels in series to show you, show you what happens when you're trying to charge a battery that keeps on tripping. Okay, in a short few seconds, it should show you the solar panel connected. I want you to watch carefully now. Because this um, Battleborn battery is just about to say it's had enough charge. A few more seconds. In fact, the reason this is not charging actually is because the battery appears to be fully charged. Okay, because uh, I've told it that. Uh, when it reaches the float voltage, let me set that uh, voltage up a little bit more. There we go, float in bulk. That's exactly why it's not charging anymore. So let me set it up just to prove a point. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna kick me out now because float voltage should always be lower than bulk voltage. Okay. And I get people Wondering why it's probably changed the bulk voltage as well now. There you go. You see, by changing the float voltage, it also changed the bulk voltage because on battery type user two, the two of them are linked together. Okay, so I'm going to exit there now and it's starting to charge. You see that? And watch how quickly that battery voltage is climbing. You see that? See the battery voltage is right up to 29 volts? Okay. Sometimes the grower will trip and that dotted line will disappear. This time we... ...be lucky. So it managed to still kind of uh, keep going. But you can see the battery voltage is dancing around wildly. That's a sure sign that your BMS is going open circuit. Open circuit and it comes down to 26 volts and, and now when I run a load on this thing for a little while and take the solar panel off you can see it's fully charged. I'm going to pause the video here and connect a load in here. In fact uh, we could probably put a heat gun straight on there right? Yeah we got a heat gun that we can run straight in there. Let's start up that heat gun. And there you go, it tripped straight away. Did you see that? A fully charged battery tripping. Let me keep it rang. Tries to invert. As it tries to invert, the heat gun pulls the power and you got on maximum heat or just one click? Okay. So we just lowered the uh, heat setting right now. And so, fully charged, nearly empty, but battery voltage is 26 volts. I'm going to leave it there for a little while and watch what happens. Now the solution for this is to balance those two batteries and or to lower your bulk and float charge voltage. Because you never want to you never want to charge the battery so full that the BMS is going to trip. Okay. So what I'm going to do is shut the solar off right now because the solar is powering the powering the loads. I want to simulate the end of the day. Right now, and so the heat gun is going to have to pull out all the energy that that solar panel just put into the battery a few seconds ago. And you see, I tripped that breaker the first thing is the dotted line disappears and then a few seconds later that solar panel icon should disappear as well saying that there's no solar voltage and that heat gun now is running at about 750 watts at full tilt it was uh, 1.5 kilowatts 
So, uh, you see that? The whole inverter just shut down. And uh, so the only solution for that is, is a battery equalizer, such as that. This is a 24 volt unit. And uh, Dirk, let's just grab that voltmeter again and measure what's going on over here. Let's have a look at that Battleborn battery. That's the one that's fully charged. You can just swap the terminals around so it doesn't read negative. Thirteen point five three volts, and let's go across this one. Okay, ten volts, open circuit. And the moment I'm going to just turn the inverter on to prove a point, well, it is it was on. It won't come on now. And I get this question a lot: Why would my inverter turn on, and I've got voltage? Okay, it's exactly the reason. Okay, so the solution for this is a battery balancer. So a little device like this, very simple. We sell them on our website, and uh, this is just a uh, a pre-unit that we've got over here with the the logo that's not 100% correct yet. But um, so this wire over here, just connect that to the center terminal. This wire will go to the white wire goes to the center terminal between the batteries. The black wire, I'm just going to put it on there temporarily, like that, just, just to show you guys what's happening. So please don't call me unless you've got a battery equalizer. So what this battery equalizer is doing, I'm going to set my current clamp meter to 60 amp range. I'm going to zero it. And there's nothing connected. You can see there's no inverter connected. I've got the negative wire connected, but that means nothing because there's no circuit. And um, I'm going to put my current clamp on there, and I can see that 0.8 amps is, is coming into this battery. I'll just lift that black wire up there. And 0.8 amps is going out of this battery. So uh, a few, basically 0.8 amps is coming from this one to the next one. So these batteries are being balanced all the time, 24 hours a day while it's connected to your inverter so please if if you've got this type of problem you need one of these if you don't have one of these you've seen what the problem is please try to figure out what's going on first and get some battery balancers this battery balancer can balance um, two 12 volt batteries in series we've got another model that can do four batteries in series in fact it's so smart that you can just put two batteries next to each other and um, it will automatically it will automatically balance between all the batteries and these batteries could even be 3.2 volt cells and it'll balance these 3.2 volt cells so you can daisy chain them up to any voltage battery that you want it'll balance them all